Hey Calibrate Tools and DIY Tribe, if you're curious about TIG welding, very thin metal, you want to stick around and watch this video. See you right after this. Okay, so this is some very thin aluminum. It's less than 40 thousandths uh, of an inch thick. So I'm gonna have to be very careful in how we TIG weld this seam right here, right? So. so. All right, guys, when it comes to TIG welding, cleaning your materials is absolutely a non-negotiable. If you don't clean your materials, your welds will look like a bomb was dropped on them, seriously. So like you see here, just grab you some alcohol, a steel brush, and get to scrubbing. The aluminum foil being added underneath the work will act as a heat sink. In other words, the excess heat generated by the welding process will have an extra layer of metal, the foil, to absorb the heat instead of it going back into the metal and making it too hot. This aluminum is already very thin, and so the heat sink of the foil will reduce the risk of burning through. Now the foil will also block any air contaminants coming in from underneath, and it also fills any gaps in the seam that can cause burn through. Now it's important to understand that aluminum dissipates heat very quickly, which means that heat is transferred throughout aluminum at a much faster rate than it would through mild steel or stainless steel. In fact, heat is transferred throughout aluminum 15 times faster than stainless. This can be a challenge when welding aluminum because once the electric arc from the tungsten starts to heat up the area where you want to form the puddle, heat in effect runs away from the area because aluminum dissipates or spreads heat throughout the piece very quickly. It may seem that it's taking forever for the puddle to start. So you may find that you have to apply more pressure to the gas pedal in the beginning just to form the puddle. Then you can let up off the pedal or the gas once it forms. Or if you have your settings at a high enough amperage, then the length of time to form the puddle or tack your pieces may not take as long. Out of all the welding processes, TIG welding no doubt requires the most skill, dexterity, hand-eye-foot coordination, and timing. Mastering TIG can be a very rewarding personal accomplishment, as I've witnessed even on a basic beginner level with students. Learning how to feed your filler rod into the puddle methodically, as you saw there, is one of those skills you will pick up along the way. Practice long enough and you'll get it. It'll just click in one day. The rod gets shorter and shorter as you feed it into the puddle because it's melting off a piece with each tap. So if you don't learn how to feed it, your hand will eventually get too close to the torch if you're not careful. Now, mind you, everybody doesn't do this, but it sure helps to learn it. Did anyone notice that white braided cloth resting on the workpiece in the background? In the welding world, it's called a TIG finger. It's basically a heat shield you slip over your pinky finger and ring finger that will prevent your hand from getting burnt by the hot metal. We've already discussed how fast aluminum spreads heat. And because TIG gloves are thin already to allow for more flexibility and vision instead of bulky stick gloves, the thin material is the trade-off that can be pretty painful. So you may want to invest in a TIG finger at some point. At the end of each run, you will notice the torch is kept hovering over the bead. It's necessary to take your foot off the pedal and allow the remaining gas exiting the torch to coat the end of your bead for a few seconds. The 100% argon gas will prevent any oxidation from creeping in and contaminating the end of the bead. So don't pull away right away. Take your foot off the pedal and keep the torch over the area for about five seconds. As I tell my students, 
There are three things you must master to become a great welder. Speed, stability, and distance. In the case of TIG welding, speed is the rate at which you move your torch along the joint. If you move too slow, you run the risk of burning through. If you move too fast, you run the risk of not achieving adequate penetration or deep enough penetration. So you have to find the sweet spot. Distance is also very important. If your electrode, in this case, the tip of the tungsten, is too far away from the workpiece, the electrical arc loses focus and gets too wide. The machine can sense this overly long arc and makes the arc hotter to compensate for the distance, destroying your weld bead or even burning through the work. On the other hand, if the tungsten is too close, you may end up touching the puddle and glob up the tip of the tungsten. Same with the filler rod. Watch how close you feed it as well. If you feed it too close to the tungsten, the two will make contact and sparks will fly and now you have to go and sharpen the tungsten and cut the bad piece, the globbed up piece off the filler rod. Stability means you must stay as still as possible, almost robot-like to achieve a decent looking weld. It doesn't mean you have to be too tense because that can cause its own set of problems, but learn the art of relaxed stillness. Tacking both ends of your joints first is critical as well. If you don't, the metal is sure to warp on you and your perfectly straight joint will look like the letter S. At some point, you get so skilled, you'll be able to TIG weld uphill like this.
All right, guys, I'll be honest. You'll never stop learning when it comes to welding. I don't even know the half of it, okay? But if you did learn something today and you want to make a comment or you want to add something, maybe even correct anything I said, I'm welcome to it, as long as it's respectful, right? And if you feel led to do so, don't forget to go to Calibrate.com, get some of the products to help support the channel. Also sign up for the email list to get some great newsletters on home improvement and DIY. Love you guys. See you next time.